Welcome back. So the next step in creating this app is to start to actually style the each of the city temperature uh, rows in this flat list. One thing we also need to do is add the um, add the correct text to when displaying the the temperature in Celsius. So to do this, just go and search for Celsius, spell it correctly, and just copy the that little icon here and just place this like so. So this should now render in here just so you have a, a better all round display. So the next thing we're going to be doing is actually adjusting the um, output of our elements in here slightly before we start to move into more styling. So for the view we want to actually add uh, a style using a, a style sheet down below. So we'll call this one row and we're going to do this same process for a city. So we're actually going to separate these out into two separate elements. So the first one will be for the temperature and the second one will be for the name of the city. So we're going to give a style to both. So for now we'll start with the, the city. We'll call this styles city name and first we'll we'll add styling for the row and for the city name so we'll start with the row so the same as before we want to set a new object in the style sheet for row and we're going to give this a flex of one a padding vertical padding of around 25 horizontal padding of 15. We also want to change the flex direction, which we learned in the, the previous modules. So this will allow us to position these elements either above or below or beside each other. So we're gonna set this as row so that they display alongside each other like this. Now that we've made these two separate uh, text components. We also want to set justify content of space between. This will mean that our, our new separate text elements will display right on the, the left and the right hand side of the screen with all the space added in between uh, the two components. We're also going to add a border to the bottom of this component and set the color as well. So if we add this, this comma here to make sure that everything's uh, correct, check that there's no missing commas. And if we save this, we've missed uh, ending comma. Oh, it's just here. Missing uh, colon from there. So we'll just save this now. So here we go. We can see uh, what we have right now is the spacing between, but one thing we actually need to do is add a, um, a style to the flat list itself to ensure that the, the width is going to be 100%, just so that it spans the entire um, screen. So again, this is a, a big jump forward already. This is starting to look a lot better. So what we want to do now is add our next uh, styling object for the name of the city. So again, we go into the style sheet, we create the new um, parameter for us, and we want to set the font size at 20, and we want a line height for this as well, so that we can have, uh, say, uh, one uh, font size on this side and another font size for the um, actual temperature to a different font sizes but we want the overall elements to take up the same height so that each line is the same and they'll both be aligned uh, to the center of each of these rows. So we want to set the line height at 40. We'll also set the font family just so that we can uh, customize this a little bit more. And a font I think will look well for this is 
Avenir, I think that's what that one's called. And make sure again that you add this comma here. So if we save this now, we can see this is starting to look a little bit more styled. So what we want to do next is set some styling for the temperature here. So if we move back to the, uh, the temperature text component, we're going to add a style of temp. So again, we're moving to here and we're going to set this uh, styling object. Also, don't forget this comma each time you add a new style. So first we're going to add a font size of around uh, 30 pixels or 30 and we're also going to set a line height again as we mentioned before we want this to be the same as the line height for the city name so that they both uh, take up the same amount of height overall even though they are different font sizes so this will be 40 and we'll set a, a width here as well so that um, all of our uh, Uh, temperatures take up the same overall width. So a good uh, amount here will be 130. We'll also add a margin on the right hand side of about 15 and we're going to set a font weight just so this uh, stands out a little bit more. This will be bold and we also want to use the same font um, that we use for the city name. So if we save this and see um, what we have now, obviously I've missed a comma. I've actually missed this, this colon here for, for the margin right. Okay, we've just got to wait for the simulator now. I'll just restart this simulator. This happens sometimes if you make a lot of changes in one go. Okay, so here we can see our, our styling now. It's actually starting to look quite nice. So again, we can pull to refresh that function that we added earlier so that you can change the cities. And then each time it opens up, it will also uh, be new cities than we had before. So a couple of things that will actually improve the styling a lot here is if we can add a range for each of these temperatures. So for example, if the temperature is below 10 degrees, it could be... Uh, the font color here could be blue. If it's then in a medium range of temperatures, we could make it green. And then for warmer temperatures, orange and red. So for us to start to implement this, we first are going to add a, um, some different new uh, objects to our style sheet for each of these temperature ranges. So we'll have cold and we'll set the color to blue. We'll then have medium and set the color to green and then hot and set the color to orange and then very hot and set the color to red. So obviously this won't do anything right now. But what we're going to be doing is moving up to this temperature style and we're going to actually use a function to see which range this temperature will fall into. So first, let's actually go and make this function. So let's scroll up here till we have our other functions. And we're gonna create some space and we're gonna to start to write out this new function. So we're gonna call this get temp range. And we're gonna pass in the temperature. So we just call this T and then we're gonna create out this function. So we're going to keep this really simple and just use if statements for this function. So we'll start by just saying if the temperature is less than 11, return 1. So this is our first range. And then if the temperature is, um, is greater than 10, but it's also less than then 20, we want to return 2. This will be in our second range. And then obviously, if the, uh, the temperature is greater than or equal to 20, because we want anything above 20 to be in this new range, so this, is, this one here would only get temperatures up to 19. So we want to 
capture this if it's 20 or above. So if it's 20 or more, but also less than 30, this will be in our third range. And then, as you've guessed it, I can just move down to here. If the temperature is greater than or equal to 30, we're going to return 4. So this might look a little bit confusing, but if you actually really break it down, we're just seeing which range each of um, the temperatures are going to be within. So now we're going to get, no matter what number we send um, into this function, we're going to get either 1, 2, 3, or 4. So now that we know this, we can move back to our, um, our temperature styling just here. And we can start to actually um, check the actual temperature for each city in relation to these uh, ranges. So first thing we want to do is change this um, inline styling where we're using this object here into using an array. So we do that just by adding in these brackets. And then we want to create a bit of space just here and pass in this actual temperature to this new function to see which range it falls into. So we're going to start just by using a ternary operator, which basically just means an if statement, which is all on one line. So we start just by calling this dot, what do we call this function? Get temp range. So just here, and we're going to pass in the actual temperature of this uh, rendered item, so this row of this city. So this is just here, so it will be item dot temp. And again, remember we've already uh, rounded this up here, so we know that it will fall into this range and it will be a whole number. So once we've done that, we can just check what this is. So for this first one, we want to just see if, it, if it's equal to one. So this will mean, is this, this temperature less than 11 degrees. So if this is, we want to then put a question mark, which is then where we put the uh, first um, option, so if this if statement. So if this is correct, we want to set this to be the styles of cold. And if it's false, we, we can leave this blank, but I like to always put something in here. So we're just gonna say styles.temp, even though we've already set this down below. So as you can see, this is actually quite simple. So we're just performing an a, uh, if statement just here. So is this, so the response of this function, which returns a range each time. If this is equal to one, make sure that we add the styles.cold um, styling object to this component style. So again, we're gonna copy this and paste this for the rest of the possible options. So just make sure they're on the same level of indentation. And we're going to change each of these to two, three, and four, and then change each of these to match up to the uh, styles we made below. So we had cold, medium, hot, and very hot. And then we also have, make sure you have the commas there, we also have this style being passed through no matter what. Anyway, so we could end up with a lot of these functions, but that's okay. So now we're just going to save this and see what we have. So obviously these ranges, this isn't the best example, but all of these elements fall into the medium or hot range. So if we refresh it now, we have a couple more, but not too many. We want some lower temperatures. Okay, so what have we got here? This temperature is coming out as black, which shouldn't be possible. So let's just check what could be causing this. Okay, as you can see here, I've put in the wrong um, operator for this uh, if statement just here. So now that we've rerun this, we can see that the um, elements that should have been in this second range, which would be medium, weren't uh, being styled. So they were coming back just as uh, plain black text, which we had set um, in this original temp style, because it was the default color. But now we've added this styling in, our whole range should be correct. So if we refresh this a couple more times, see if we can find one that will be 
in the blue styling or if it's just too warm at the moment. So we have one again in the medium range. We haven't got anywhere yet. Let's see if we can force this to find somewhere cold. Let's just refresh it a couple more times because there should be. Here we go. We've got one in this in this cold range. So that's why this one is blue. So you can see it's already starting to look and uh, feel quite nice. And we have this range of uh, different styles based on this actual live data that we've set from our style sheet. So in the next video, we're going to look at styling this actual uh, row, the background color here, a little bit more nicely. We're going to start using a a gradient here which will take advantage of a component that's provided by Expo and uh, this should help to just bring a little bit more um, of a dynamic feel to uh, app.